Hi, this is Jeff Hoffman, and I'm going to talk to you today about achieving explosive growth in your small business. All of you are entrepreneurs. You're all trying to build and grow a business, and I'm going to share some tips with you, the things you have to get right in order to achieve that explosive growth when certain companies take off and grow from small to big. All the rest of us try to figure out what did they do that we didn't do? Why did their company grow so big? And so because of some of the companies I've been involved in and because of studying so many other companies around the world and working with uh, businesses that did scale and achieve growth, what I've done is made a list of some of the things that worked. And so here are some of the things you have to do if you want your business to grow from whatever size it is, from a smaller business into a much bigger business. So here's the first one. The first thing you need to do to achieve uh, explosive exponential growth, not the long, slow growth, um, is to win a gold medal at one thing. And what I mean by that is so many business owners I talk to are trying to do too many things. They're trying to provide four different services. They're trying to create five different products. And the truth is that the companies that really grew did so. Now, remember, I'm not talking about later in your life where you may want your business to do a lot of things. I'm talking about how you grow. So this is from the growth period, from small to big. Um, the way those companies grew is that they did not try to sell three or four different things or provide every service to every customer. They picked the product or service that they believed that they could win a gold medal in, the thing that you think that you can be best at in your field, and they focused on that. So let me give you a couple of examples. Um, <clears throat> early on, for seven years, Amazon only sold books. I used to talk to Jeff Bezos back in those early days, and what he said was, I'm going to be the best darn bookseller there is. And so they only sold books. A a another company that some of you might know is called Zappos. Com. Early on, Zappos only sold shoes. So these companies picked the product that they thought they could win a gold medal in, they could be best at, and they stayed focused on that. Companies that I was part of, like Priceline.com, Booking.com, uh, the company said didn't sell luggage. The company didn't sell travel insurance or vacation. The company sold hotel rooms. Let's pick the product we can win a gold medal at. And today, the company is the world's largest seller of hotel rooms. So become the best darn something that you can be. Stop companies that split, that have four products or four services. You're splitting your marketing dollars, your time, your attention, your people four ways. And imagine if you took all of your money, all of your time, and all of your people and just put them on one thing. Let's just all sell books how much better you do if you focus on that. So that's your first tip. Win a gold medal at one thing. Sometimes when companies say, what's the first thing I need to do to grow? As I tell them, you need to shrink first and stop selling those other three services. Pick the one you're best at and let's go from there. Second, I want you to think about a brand. And a brand is what the world recognizes you as, how the world sees you, how they remember you. How people in conversations that you weren't even in are talking about you. And so the most important thing there is to figure out what your brand asset is. And let me explain what a brand asset is. The brand asset is the one, let's be clear, one single most important reason anybody should do business with you. It's the one thing that distinguishes you the most from anybody in the marketplace. And a brand asset should be, or brand promise, it should be three things. It should be distinguishing, it should be memorable, and it should be powerful. So let me explain each of those three things. Distinguishing means that this thing about you is the thing that makes you different and better than all your customers. So if I were to ask you guys that question, what is the one thing that distinguishes you most from all the rest of your competitors, what would that thing be? That's the thing that you need to write down. Memorable is important. You need to be able to explain it. And I'll give you an example in a minute. You need to be able to explain it in a really simple way that people will remember it and are able to share it and tell other people in the marketplace who you are and what you're about. 
And the last one is powerful. It needs to be something that people care about. Um, so uh, a, a brand asset, a brand differentiator. So in our company early on, uh, for example, in the company Priceline.com, um, Priceline's thing was it was the name your own price company. You could make an offer on an empty hotel room. Who could do that? That was the di most distinguishing part. You didn't just buy a hotel room. You made an offer on an empty hotel room. So when the company said, how would you like to name your own price? That was distinguishing, right? Because no place else did that. It was memorable because it was the name your own price company. And it was powerful because people did care about the price of the hotel room. So find your brand asset. Find the one most distinguishing thing about you. And that's the horse you're going to ride in the race. Stop, stop trying to tell people 12 different reasons they should come do business with you. Give them the one that you're best at, the most important thing there. Next, I want you to stop trying to sell everything to everybody. So many, so often when I ask business owners, I say to them, who will buy your product? And they tell me everybody. Who will use your service? Everybody, everybody should come here. But the truth is, you don't have the marketing budget for everybody. So quit trying to sell to everybody. And I know that that's tempting because you want everybody to come in. But again, what we're talking about today is explosive growth. And what we did was we studied the companies whose growth really took off, who went from small to big. And here's one of the things we noticed, that they didn't try to sell to everybody. What they tried to figure out was something I like to call the second slide customer. And let me explain what that means. That's just my thing. Uh, I'm not a real thing. The second slide came because I was on a marketing trip, um, a marketing meeting, a sales meeting with one my salesperson. And I went with him to see how he did sales. And he had a PowerPoint that was 20 slides long that explained to a customer why they should buy from us. He was trying to close a sale. And the first customer that he went to um, listened to all 20 slides, took notes, and said, wow, I love your company and your products. I, you know, I'm, I'm really interested. I'll get back to you. And my salesperson said, see, he likes us. He likes our product. Um, he's interested. He'll get back to us. But then we went to our second meeting. And in the second meeting, I want to tell you guys what happened. He was on the second slide. Remember, he had a 20-slide PowerPoint. On the second slide, the woman, the customer said, oh, my gosh, I, where have you been all my life? I've been looking all over for a product like this. I'll take it. And my salesperson started to continue. And I said, okay, she already said yes, she already bought. You don't have to show her any more slides. And so when we left, a thought occurred to me. Your job as a company is to find all the second slide customers. Who are the people? What I don't want you to do is spend your time trying to convince people to buy your product when somewhere out there is somebody that's gonna meet you your company, your product, your service, and they're going to say, oh my God, where have you been all my life? I've been looking everywhere for someone like you. I'll take it. Okay. Somebody, every business has people that love you, people that love your product, people that don't want to go anywhere else but to you. So your job is not to convince the people that don't really want to buy your product to buy from you. Your job is to go find the people that absolutely want to buy your product. I'm going to tell you how you do that. You find these second slide customers by focusing on the people that love you now, the people that, that talk about you, that buy your product, that wouldn't go anywhere else. Study them and start to understand what's similar about them so you can build a profile, a set of questions to ask people that next time you're chatting with somebody and in five minutes, you can say, oh, she's going to buy from me. She's going to love me. Why? Because you know what your perfect customer looks like. Next point in how to achieve explosive growth um, is I'm going to tell you something about operations. Um, and, and I call this the sell more flowers technique. And what I've noticed was the companies that grew the fastest were the companies that were really focused on operational efficiency. What does operational efficiency mean? It means that that you don't waste time doing things that don't make your business grow. So the question is, how do you do that? 
How do you stay focused on those things? And I'm going to share a lesson with you and give you something to do that I learned from a guy that used to have one little flower shop. So that was his business. And when I met him years later, he'd become the single largest seller of flowers in the country. And I said, how did you go from having one little flower shop to being the biggest? How did you grow so explosively? And he said, why don't you come to my office and I'll show you how we're so focused on efficiency uh, that we grew fast because we don't waste our time doing anything that doesn't help us grow. So here's the first thing he showed me. On the wall of his company, they sell flowers. He had written in giant letters, sell more flowers. So that's the first thing I'm going to tell you to do. Figure out what the fundamental thing that you do is and write it on the wall. If you were in the business of running hair salons, then the fundamental fundamental thing you do is book a stylist, right? Book a cut. Somebody needs to sign up and say, I want you to do my hair. Book a hair customer. That's it. So he wrote, sell more flowers on the wall. But then he does an interesting thing. He goes around to his employees and he asks them in the middle of the day, what are you doing right now? And they answer him and he says, how is that going to help us sell more flowers? And the employee either can explain how the work they are doing right now helps the company achieve its goal that's written on the wall, sell more flowers. Or if they can't answer that, he says to them, put that down and go find something else to do. So my challenge to you is right on the wall while you're in business, sell more haircuts. And then every day, ask yourself, what am I doing right now? Ask everybody that works in your office, in your salon, what are you doing right now? And how is that going to help us sell more flowers? How is that going to help us close, book more haircuts? And if you don't know the answer, stop doing that. And if you do know the answer, do more of that. And the reason to write that on the wall is so every day during the day, your people are looking around and saying, what could I do to help us sell more haircuts today, more flowers today? So that is a focus on being really efficient, on just doing things at work that help your business grow and not wasting time on things that don't grow your business. Um, I just want to cover one more area today. Um, a last piece in how to achieve explosive growth. And that is all about team and talent. The most valuable, a lot of time, resource in the world is not money. It's, it's not financial capital. It's human capital. It's not money. It's talent. A lot of times when I'm talking to small businesses and they're talking about growing, they say, Jeff, I can't grow because I need more money, more funding. But I got to tell you guys something. The key to success and growth is not money. It's talent. Giving a lot of money. Let's say you got an investor to give you money. Giving a lot of money to a company who has average employees does not make a successful company. But giving even a little bit of money to a company that has amazing people, amazing people find a way to do amazing things even with a little bit of money. So spend less of your time running your business all the time and start scheduling time to go find absolutely amazing people. You should be surrounded by people that are smarter than you, people are better that are better than you, right? I didn't start to grow until I realized that I need to go find people better than me and people smarter than me and I need to go get them. And the most talented people in your industry, those people don't wander into your shop. They don't wander into your office or your salon and say, please hire me. Those people are already working somewhere. They don't need a job. So how do you find the most talented people? You got to go find them. You got to do some work. I used to schedule one or two days a month where I would not be in the office because I was going to go drive around to places where I could meet and find some of these talented people and try to talk them into coming to work for me. Talent is critical. Spend less time running the business and more time finding smart people, talented people to work for you and to run it for you. As a matter of fact, that is why culture is really important. Culture is all about what it's like to work for you. You need to think about, well, let me put it to you this way. When I would interview people, my team would come out and they'd be chatting with someone over coffee before we even formally interviewed them. 
And you know what they would do? They would shake their head and they'd go, nah, we don't even need to interview this guy. He's not one of us. Or they'd do the opposite. They'd be having coffee with a girl we were bringing in that day. I remember this day. And they're like, just hire her, Jeff. I was like, you guys didn't interview her. And they said, she's totally one of us. So my question to you is, what does one of us mean? What kind of people do you want working for you? What kind of company do you want to run? That only happens when you take the time to define your values and your culture and you write those things on the wall. So for example, one of the things that was written on my wall was dignity and respect. The culture of my company is we treat all human beings with the same dignity and respect, no matter what their title is, their position in life, their financial condition, it doesn't matter. That's written on the wall at my company. So you know what happens? I only hire people that I know will treat everybody with the same dignity and respect, regardless of who they are. That's my culture. That's my values. It's written on the wall. If you don't believe that, you don't work here. That is part of hunting for talent is hiring to culture. And part of creating culture is making sure your values are written on your wall so people that come to work for you understand what you believe in and your customers do. That's how I got talented people to work for me because they wanted to work in a place like that as well. So let me just review very quickly. I gave you a handful of pointers for how to make a small business grow big. First, I told you to win a gold medal at one thing. Stop trying to sell everything to everybody. Pick the product or service that you can be known for and put all your effort on that thing that you're really a gold medal winner at. Second, I told you to build your brand, which is around a brand asset, which is around your brand promise. And what that means is to find something that differentiates you from your customers and market around your point of differentiation heavily so people remember why they should come to you and you don't sound like everybody else in the market. I told you about a second slide customer. And what I meant was figure out why some people love your business and why they don't by interviewing the people that love you and making notes of the traits about those kind of people so that you'll get better at spotting customers who are gonna love you right away and quit wasting your time trying to talk people into liking you when there's somebody already out there that's looking for you. Next, I said, sell more flowers, which is right on the wall, what you want people to achieve every day, sell more haircuts, whatever it is, and constantly be asking yourself, are we spending our time on things that are gonna make this business grow? And then lastly, we close by saying that talent is everything. You need to schedule some of your time to stop running your business and to go around and find really talented people and spend your time talking them into working for you by focusing as well on a culture, by building a workplace that amazing people who could work anywhere they work, they all wanna come work for you. So again, I'm Jeff Hoffman. My email is jeff at jeffhoffman.com. And I wish you all amazing success in growing your businesses to as large as you want them to be. Thank you very much for listening to me today. 